Hello. Today, Wayward Wine, you are in for quite the treat. It is fall, and the leaves are changing color, the days are getting colder, the nights are getting longer, and it's time to start pulling out those complex, deep red wines that maybe you forgot about during the summertime. In that spirit, I was rummaging around in my cellar and I found this. Michel Chaputier's Meunier de la Cisoran, Hermitage, 2012. Now, we'll talk about the who and the what in a second, but first let's talk about where. The Hermitage is a sub-appellation in southeastern France, famed for some of the most ageable and complex Syrah anywhere in the world. Unlike its sibling to the south, Chateauneuf de Pop, where they make really complex red blends, or the Cote Roti, where they co-ferment Viognier with Syrah to make really, really well-wound, bright, interesting Syrah as well, the Hermitage is just this small little strip of south-facing granite that provides almost a solar panel to absorb all that sun. And then, surprisingly enough, because it's a little bit more continental, a little away from the Mediterranean, unlike Chateauneuf de Pop, it creates wines that just have a bit more acidity, a bit more grip to them, and more ageability in a lot of cases. So, you find me in my office because, just as I was about to tell you a little bit more about the wine, uh, my three-year-old daughter came home and had to be fed entertained and bathed and finally now she's asleep in bed happy as a clam so we can dive a little bit deeper into oh yeah this Michel Chaputier's Meunier de la Cisoran Hermitage 2012 now we talked a bit about where Hermitage in the Côte de Rome and now we're going to dive into its history. So Meunier de la Cisoran is actually in reference to the original owner of the property, Maurice Meunier de la Cisoran. He had owned the property and his family had owned the property, but then due to a hunting accident, he was blinded and incapable of really working the winery anymore. And so he sold it to a family that he felt could handle it and take it to places that it should go and that was the Chaputier family. He sold it to them in 1808, and because he was blinded, he went on actually to develop an abbreviated form of Braille um, in France that allowed people who were blind to be able to read just by touching things very quickly instead of a more extended form. And so Michel Chaputier decided to honor him by not only putting the family name, Meunier de la Cisoraine, on the label of Emmetage, from where these vineyards come, but also to create Braille labels. And I don't know if you can see it in the light here, but all of Chaputé's labels have Braille on them, giving you a basic breakdown of what the wine is, so that blind people who, I believe, have a heightened sense of taste and smell because of their blindness, and also just want to enjoy wine like all the rest of us, can now find things. Uh, you know, walking through his shelves and just feel for what it is. Oh yes, that's Chaputier's La Cisoraine. Cool. And buy a bottle. So, in honor of the original owners, he did that. Now, Michel Chaputier did a lot of other things, too. He basically took over the winery in 1990 at the age of 26 and revolutionized everything they were doing there. Really, for the first time in the Rhone Valley, he converted all vineyards to biodynamic farming over time and went to natural fermentations and became really obsessed with making sure winemaking was clean and uninfluenced by overly powerful new French barriques. Uh, he really tried to fight the trend of intervention in winemaking by going far more natural in terms of how things are done. And is really one of the forefathers now of biodynamic farming throughout the Rhone Valley and in France in general, as well as vineyard seelands in Germany. And that is the same here at this 2012 Hermitage. So, with that behind us, let's give it a taste. Now, Chapitier's Hermitage here is very deep ruby in color. It doesn't show any of those garnet highlights that you'll get on a wine that should be this old by now. Um, I'm quite surprised, actually. It's definitely just a very pure, clean ruby color running all the way to the rim of the wine. And the legs are just a beautiful wash, very nice, thick, uh, evaporation of the alcohol happening there. Aromatically, <laughs> it's it pounces on you. It is 
massively intense, pronounced, like, juniper. You know, think gin, almost, that kind of gin-like spice, that juniper, that sappiness, that cedar. Sandalwood, you know, it's got that lovely woody kind of sappy quality to it, almost tar-like. There's a smokiness to it as well, almost like a fresh, like freshly burnt ash. And what uh, Hermitage and Syrah in general are famed for from cooler climates, cracked pepper. Um, and then the fruit profile, let's not ignore that. Very pronounced as well. Uh, we get lots of I get, like red fruits, kind of the hot dried red fruits. I get like black cherry, boysenberry, almost a pomegranate note as well. There's a fresh little fruitiness to it. Very pretty thing. Really complex. Let's try it. And the palate is dry, undeniably so. The acids are medium plus. Very bright, very starlight acidity, cutting through all that darkness. The tannins are high. This is pretty grippy stuff. And the tannins are very sinewy, very muscular, very much like a runner's, you know, runner's body almost. They're just very, very thin and fine and very tight. And that's, I mean, in part because this wine is young. A 2012 Hermitage, you can age 30, 40 years and still have it hold up typically. And that's the same here. The alcohol is moderate, but certainly warm. You can definitely tell this is coming from a hot climate. It's only 13.5%, but it's present. It just kind of warms you and owns you. It's really beautiful that way. And the body is, I'd say, just medium plus in, in body. It's not huge. This is not your big blockbuster Californian Syrah or something from maybe South Africa or, or Australia, Shiraz for that matter. No, 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 no. This is poise, this is balance. You know, this is, stands on its toes almost, like a ballerina holding up this like mass amount of fruit almost on, on their tippy toes. It's quite impressive. Um, flavor profiles as well, pronounced, demanding present. You really have to stop anything you're doing and listen to this when you're tasting it. And they show off a lot of those savory characteristics we noticed before, like the spice, the juniper, the smoke, the ash, the tar, the sandalwood is there as well. Also a beautiful kind of black licorice thing going on here. Nothing is sweet. There's certainly fruitiness to it, but more of that savory quality, almost leather, like the way leather smells, warm leather. And even the texture is kind of like that sometimes too. And the length on it is long. I mean, this wine has a hold. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. So what you need to do with it is you need to find olives or anything you put olive tapenade with. You need to find grilled meats, rotisserie meats, Things that are smoked would be gorgeous as well. That really kind of helped counterbalance to help show off a bit more of the fruit there. So when that smoky food you're tasting and the smokiness of the wine kind of like cancel each other out almost. And then your palate starts searching for the other things that are there, such as the lovely black cherry pomegranate fruit that's at the core of it. Um, you know, some nice slightly stinky cheese would be pretty pleasant here. Truffled cheese would be awesome. Uh, lamb would be really good with some grilling going on there as well. I mean, honestly, you could go pretty complex with this. And fall foods too. Uh, you know, this would be really, really pleasant up against some really garlicky mashed potatoes. You know, you could throw this up against that roast beef as well with a really killer gravy that's very savory. This would definitely shine with that meal and help clean the palate every time you took a bite of any of that sort of fatty, buttery magic that comes with this time of the year. So it kind of goes without saying, it's outstanding. Um, Michel Chupetier never really messes around. If you find any of his bottlings, you're probably gonna be doing pretty well for yourself. There can be all the way from very inexpensive, you know, maybe $10 uh, Cote de blends, to things like this, which are around maybe $160 a bottle. If you can get a hold of an Hermitage, or a crow's for that matter, hide it. 
Hide it longer than I did. 2012 is way too young still. I think this wine would definitely be peaking in another four to five years and hold probably for another 10 or so. So, you know, buy two. Drink one now and maybe drink another one in 20 years and see where that's at. Or buy more if you can. But either way, total treat. Definitely something to look after. And either way, thank you for watching. And